Hey, hey folks. So yesterday I gave you a review of the Pixel hardware and camera primarily, but I realized I didn't talk about the software. And I think this is an important part of the experience. So let's uh, dive into that right now, okay? So this here is a Pixel XL. I've reviewed it about two weeks ago for chipchick.com. Go check it out, chipchick.com. Chip, chip, My Pixel XL review there. And in case you haven't seen a Pixel XL or Pixel, this is what it looks like. And you know, the hardware is great, the camera is great. Uh, it's a really worthy successor to the Nexus line. And more importantly, one of the most, one of the best phones on the market today up there with the Galaxy S7 and the iPhone 7 Plus, in my opinion. So watch my other video somewhere down here to get the whole hardware story. But let's talk about the software right now. And when the first thing you'll notice is a very different looking launcher. It's not that different actually, but it's different enough from a Nexus launcher, from the Google Now launcher. The general elements are still there. You've got the screen here. If you long press, you can do the same things you did before. You now have five rows of icons and you'll notice that there's no app tray icon anymore. And then you'll see this little G there and the weather widget. So let's walk through each of these elements. The little G brings up Google search. Nothing unusual here. You can tap the microphone and, and talk to it and it's basically Google now. Um, swiping this way is exactly the same as in the original Nexus uh, Google Now launcher. So again, this is Google search, Google Now. Uh, search results here are the same as on a Nexus, same with this. You have weather up here, which is uh, brings this weather widget, which is kind of a new thing that you can access from Google Now, but takes a few places to be. As you can see, I'm in Portland right now. And that's the weather. Rain and more rain and more rain, as usual. So back to this here, you notice that the icons are different. Instead of stacking the apps for the, uh, the icons for the folders, instead of stacking the apps in icon uh, depth, it shows you this kind of square of four of them. Um, and it's the same here, etc. You get the idea. Now, another thing I wanted to show is that on, if you do like this on the Nexus, for example, grab the Play Store and move it over here to another location, um, the second screen inherits the search bar on the Nexus, but here the second screen is clear and you can put more apps on it. Another noticeable difference is that you can put five apps across. Then the next thing is the app tray. The app tray seems to be gone, but it's actually there. All you have to do is swipe from the, your favorite apps down here. And there it is. But if you swipe down, you can't catch it from the top or you'll get notifications. So you have to catch it from like the search here and bring it down. You can also tap this little arrow right here, which is a little hard to do, but that little arrow right there is your way to the app tray. So let me show you that, like that. Um, but most of the time you're just gonna swipe up and swipe back down. Notice that the app tray is five across now, just like the home screen, five across. And notice that I can move something here to the middle position, which is a different thing. Also notice that both here, if I long press, I get to go directly to another location in the app. If I long press on Chrome, I can get new tabs. This is new to this launcher. Um, if I go into the here into the uh, app tray, for example, YouTube, same thing, I got choices. Going to Gmail, for example, where's my Gmail? Right here. Also get choices, I can compose an email directly. So this is very much like 3D touch on the app, on the iPhone in many ways. So that's kind of like on the front home screen, the obvious changes. Then of course is Google Assistant. And so, as I said before, this is not Google Assistant, this is Google Now, this is Google Search. It behaves like you used to, you know, Set a timer for five minutes. Okay, five minutes. Boom, Starting. right? No idea why it rotated the screen there, but maybe it thinks we're upside down, so let's fix that. But anyway, you get the idea. Um, nothing's too different here, but where it gets very different is with the assistant. And there's two ways you can get to the assistant. You can long press the home button, or you can bring up Allo, which by the way, you can do on a Nexus because the Assistant exists on the Nexus under Allo, so you have to go into the Assistant thread and have a conversation with the Assistant. But that's a bit cumbersome, right? So that's why having the Pixel launcher, this launcher, which is unique to the Pixel right now, you can't get it for any other phone, not even the Nexus, is probably the way to go if you want a Google Assistant. So you long press and you start talking to it and say things like this. 
Tell me about my day. Good afternoon, Miriam. The time is 1.01 p.m. The weather in Portland currently is 52 degrees and cloudy with a high of 54 degrees. Today at 7 p.m., you have called Donald, Miriam. Have a wonderful day. Live from NPR News in Washington, I'm Barbara Klein. Hillary Clinton is campaigning in... So, as you can see, this brings me an overview of my day and starts playing news from various news sources. You can turn that off if you don't like it. You get NPR, you get Fox, you get Bloomberg, ESPN, BBC, etc. So that's kind of different. And notice it stays in the app tray up here. Um, and that's one of the examples of something that's unique to Assistant that you can't get anywhere else. Now let's do something else. Play Lucky Trivia. Give me a second to put on my game show host costume. Okay, I'm ready. One, two, three, four. Welcome to Are You Feeling Lucky? Who's asking the questions here? I guess I am. <laughs> and I'm your Google Assistant, but enough about me. How many contestants are playing? One. Party of one, right this way. Let's do five questions. I know we've only just met, but I'm going to give you a nickname. It's Rhubarb. Oh, great. Here we go. You can always pop out of the game by saying stop. Don't overthink it. True or false, Pac-Man was invented by Toru Arutani while he was eating pizza. Uh, I have no idea. True. Oh! You can't know everything. It's actually true. Oh, here comes question two. I was right. The subject is animals. True or false, Gila monsters spend about 90% of their time underground. Yes. Nailed it. You must read a lot or something. Question three is coming up. It's a simple calculation. What's 18 plus 22? 41. 51. Or 40. Stop. Are you sure you want to quit? Yeah. All right, I'll be right here if you change your mind. Okay, so as you can see, this is a full-on interactive game where you don't have to look at the phone, which is really kind of cool. Um, now, this is an example. There's no other games like that. Lucky Trivia is the only one. But, hey, you know, this is going to show you the kind of interactions you can do. But more practically, let me show you some other stuff. What are my next flights? Here are the next few reservations. First up, Virgin America Flight 801 from PDX to SFO leaves at 12.10 p.m. on November 1st. So, now it's got all my flights almost. It's missing the flight from San Francisco to Madrid. Uh, but that's because it's another email account and I haven't copied it over yet. Um, but, it's pretty accurate. So let's find out some more. Is my San Francisco flight on time? Virgin America... Well, I still got my... I still. It still got my uh, my answer. Um, I was gonna try. Hang on. I was gonna try. Is my San Francisco flight on time and see if it would actually give me the times, and it did. But that's not what I meant to do. Um, anyway, you get the idea. You just have to kind of like say the right thing. <laughs> Otherwise, it's hard to back out once you've said the wrong thing, because then context has changed. And that's one of the things that's gonna think be really challenging with AIs is that we all mumble and fumble and then how do you get out of that context and how can you recover? And right now there's really no vehicle to do that very easily. But you know, there's a lot of really cool contextual stuff you can do here. Um, this is one example. Um, let's do some other stuff like restaurants. Find Italian restaurants nearby. I found a few places within 2.5 miles. Is Enzo's Cafe open right now? Enzo's Cafe Italiano is open right now and closes at 3.30 p.m. Take me there. Sure, Enzo's Cafe. So you, you can see I, I wanted to kill that because I, I you know, I don't want to show you um, some boring stuff about Enzo's Cafe. But at the same time, you can see how this works really well in terms of contextual uh, content. And you're going to say, well, I can do some of that in Google now, but it's not quite as slick. And um, the big gripe I have here right now, as you can see, is that this is really cool, but why is it separated? Like, why is it down here, long press or inside Allo in, in a special thread? 
why is this um, not in here? Or why is it not in here? And it's not. So you get this kind of dual world going on here. You have like Google Now, Google Search on one hand, and then you've got the Assistant on the other hand. And it's not a consistent experience and consistent interface. If you say, OK, Google, then you get this, you know, you get this interface. So what I'm saying is that that actually uh, brings up the assistant just as well. But OK Google before that used to bring up the um, the uh, the Google Now. So it's it's a really weird kind of mix, and that's basically the gist of the experience for uh, for the Pixel for the assistant. And I hope it gets better. I think it's pretty good. I think it's definitely the best of the assistants right now. And I think Google Now itself is already pretty damn good. But Assistant just brings it to one more level of um, conversation and contextualness, which I think is really much better than anything else. But again, this kind of confusing, you can get to it only from the bottom, and like it's just, you know, that needs to improve, and that's what I'm hoping will get better. Also, the other thing is you can't get this on any other phones right now. This, this launcher and the Assistant go together, and they only exist on the Pixel, and you can't install them uh, easily on other phones. People have tried, and it doesn't fully work. Um, eventually, I think, I hope that Google opens it up. I think people with older Nexuses would benefit, so we'll see how it goes. But right now, that's one of the reasons, I guess. To me, it's a bit of a gimmick. It wouldn't really be the main reason. Again, see my hardware and camera video about this phone to really get my vibe about how much I love this phone. It's really fantastic. And I would not buy it just for the Assistant. Buy it because it's got one of the best cameras. Buy it because it's probably the best Android phone. Buy it because it's beautifully made. Buy it because it's a pure Google experience. Buy it because, and I can go on and I can go on I mean look this phone is really fantastic okay if you're a Google user this is this is the way to go this this is the future this is what Google wants you to experience none of this galaxy skin crap and and I love the Galaxy S7 I think it's the other big contender in the Android game right now but seriously this is where it's at so anyway no, Google's not paying me. I really feel this way. I feel really strongly about this. You know from watching my podcasts and my history of phone reviews that I'm a strong proponent of the pure Android and the pure Google experience. I believe that um, contaminating that with skins and other people's user experience is not the way to go. And I think I'm very happy to see Google finally stay you know, creating this vertical experience of highly integrated software and hardware because it's the only way we're going to get to be competitive in the future as Android users. And, and that's, that's the way to go. So anyway, lots of strong feelings here. Um, let me unlock this with the fingerprint. Very quick unlock, as you can see. Um, watch my hardware camera review. It's down here somewhere in my videos. Um, give me thumbs up, thumbs down, hopefully thumbs up, uh, subscribe, etc., etc. I'll be doing more videos. The next thing up today, very soon, is exciting. I don't have to let you guess what this is. Le Pro 3, Le Eco, so stay tuned for that. All right, guys, talk to you later. Bye.